Hello, lovelies. Welcome back to the dollhouse. I am Kira, your yarn host. And today will be a little bit of catch up, a little bit of whips. I have been really sick the past week, so I've been slacking terribly on my YouTube channel. I apologize greatly. I'm feeling a little better. I'm still in the middle of antibiotics, so fingers crossed. I know um, my first topic of today, my thoughts are scattered. I have a bit of brain fog, so excuse me if I go off path a little bit. But I have been ADHDing about I want to do granny squares. I want to do granny squares. But once you make a granny square, your brain goes, I did that, now do something else. So my husband suggested, well, why don't you just make a big granny square? You know, this makes my ADHD happy because it's a blanket and I can keep making big granny squares and it doesn't feel like I'm doing the same thing over and over and over and over. Now this one I have made with Premier Yarns by a sweet roll. Everybody loves a sweet roll. This is black pepper swirl, 100% acrylic. Machine wash, tumble dry, 245 yards, 140 grams. I use three of these. This is not the prettiest skein, but it's the only one I have left. I, if I knew I had this one, I would have used four skeins, but I found this one. So I used three skeins of black pepper swirl, and I used one. I know a lot of people are, are, are really upset about brand mixing. But Joanne's Big Twist in gray ombre goes very nicely with the, back, with the black pepper swirl. It's almost the same texture and it's close enough that once you have the finished product, you can run your hand along it and you can't tell which yarn is which. You can't tell it's a different yarn. I wish I had a bigger space to show you. But I have made a ginormous granny square and I love it and I'm thinking about making four of these and then sewing them together for a blanket. I think it came out pretty good. You'll have to excuse my wild hair today. But this was really a lot easier than I thought. It's just the simple granny clusters with a half double border all the way around. And I figured I liked that one so much that now I am starting on this one. I haven't decided what to call that one yet. That is ba -ba -ba -ba. Bernat's Pop in Hot Cocoa. Burp, burp. And Bernat's 100% acrylic. Trying to find the wash instructions. Machine wash, delicate, tumble dry low. They're both four weight. I don't work with a whole lot of things besides four weight. Every once in a while I get brave and go to a three. But starting with the arthritis, I like the four weight better. <laughs> but I am using three skeins. So far I am on my on the half of my second skin for that using three skeins of the Burnett pop and I think I'm gonna border I haven't I haven't decided this is I love this yarn from Hobby Lobby in the color coffee I might border it with this 
7 ounces, 199 grams, 355 yards. Or, I have these that I dug up from my pile. I don't even know if these are on sale anymore, so I might not be using these. But I have Premier Every Day, which is an anti-pilling. And this is in the color Toasted Marshmallow. So I may be using this for a border, but I think maybe this one I'm going to stick with the solid since the yarn is, is primarily, like, primarily, primarily a solid. See this one with the black pepper swirl? It's all variegated. You might not be able to see because my camera, but each color has a little bit of every other color in it so I figured a variegated border would work really well on this but the browns are all kind of solid so I think maybe a solid border would work better <clears throat> When you make color planned projects from cakes, all you have to do is dissect the cakes. The black one, I did, I did moderate color planning, just trying to make sure I had the same number of rows in each color. This one, not so much. I'm just kind of letting the yarn do what the yarn does. So, I'm not having to dissect as many cakes for this. So, I did pull out the little core of this skein. So, we could match the colors that I ran out on the other skein. Um, sales are going a little slow. But, you know, your sales are only as good as your outreach is. And I can't do craft fairs and things like that because I have very little immune system that functions properly. So I'm pretty much relegated to online sales or word of mouth sales. So yeah, if anybody wants to find me on, on Twitter, I'm Dollhouse Kira on Twitter. And just DM me. Let me know what you want. If I can make it, I'll make it. Trying to get the sales up. Medication's getting expensive. Um, my antibiotics are $3,000 for 60 pills, which is a 30-day supply. Something's got to be done about healthcare. So, I am going granny square bonkers. I can't seem to make, I can make one little one and then my brain's like, nope, not making more, do something else. So, if you're wanting to make a granny square, but you have the, I did that, now let's move on kind of mindset, try making a These are just made in a spiral. Easy peasy. Um, I don't even think I went off of anybody's pattern. I just kind of, I knew how to do the granny clusters from making shawls. So I just kind of granny clustered away. Um, hot take. I don't like magic circles, magic rings, whatever you want to call them. Do not like. I hate magic circles. I can never, I, I don't know whether I don't have the dexterity for them or just bring no work. I find it easier to do a chain of four and then slip stitch and then use that for my chain. Arguably, when you pull your tail, it doesn't close as tight as a magic ring. But I don't mind the little circle in the middle because the whole blanket has gaps in it. 
So that little circle in the middle, if it doesn't close up for you, which mine closed pretty well. So you can see the middle is in between my fingers. Here. My circle closed pretty well. Sometimes it doesn't, sometimes it does. But I just did grannies in a spiral until I was happy with it. Single stitch, slip stitch, tied off, and then just half double all the way around a couple times to get a nice border. I am forever playing yarn chicken. I am forever having like so much yarn left to go, please let me finish this row. Please let me finish this row. I'm really not one for having extra skeins on hand, which is ridiculous considering the amount of yarn I have on hand. But cranny squares are a good way to use up yarn that's just been sitting for too long. It's a good way to de-stash. You don't have to use the same colors. You can use scrap and just make it a chaos madness blanket, which is probably going to be my next one because I'm having a lot of scraps left from these too. Grannies are good for that. Grannies are good for getting rid of scraps. And I just, there's too much tail weaving nonsense to deal with on tiny granny squares. I'm not having it. I'm not having it. <sighs> Still trying to get my brain together this morning. Excuse me, coffee? Coffee is good. bean juice. Um, still on the cotton kick. I got an order for some coasters for the autumn season, so I'm just kind of cranking those out in between. It's nice to have two projects. I have a brain set where focus is a problem, if you can't tell. It's kind of obvious. So I like to have two projects going at once. So if you ever get to the point that you're going, uh, I don't feel like doing this, then you have something else to pick up and work on. So I have my, my little bag, my little bag of cotton coasters. And this is my side project. So when I get tired of making blankets, I make mug rugs. I think mug rug is fun to say. And what is it? It's a little rug for your mug. It's a mug rug. Easy, easy cotton coasters. You can do those in double crochet. You can do those in half double. I like the cotton coasters in half double just because it gives you a more solid project and I know how my kids are with glasses with ice in them so the more cotton yarn in a coaster the better I'm trying to poke around on the internet and see if I can find I'm trying to find other crafters that can make shawl pins or you know, something to go along with. Um, I tried finding somebody to 3D print buttons for me, but so far the people I've asked have not been able to, to their satisfaction, meet my specifications. So still working on that. I am entirely down to buy handcrafted buttons instead of getting big bags of buttons from a big box retailer. I would rather pay somebody to make them just to know that they're handmade. You know, it's little touches. You don't want to take a beautiful handmade yarn shawl or wrap or whatever and you know, have some kind of mass-produced knick-knacky thing with it. So, 
trying to connect with some other makers. Um, I've connected with a couple of woodworkers and we're talking about shawl pins. And if you don't know what a shawl pin is, um, usually it's a two piece thing where you have some kind of open shape. Let me see if I can find one in my kit. You have some kind of open shape and then there's a pin that goes through that's like a darning needle. It's not sharp. It's not meant to perforate your yarn or your stitches. You just kind of go in between and that way it doesn't interfere with the quality of your yarn product. You know, then you don't have to worry about it splitting your yarn or breaking your yarn. There's one. And basically, another thing that these big granny squares would for, if you fold them diagonally, they make a nice shawl. But, excuse cam angle, I will show you how this works. Basically, you put the open end here, you take the shawl pin, and you go between the stitches. And then you poke out the other end. And you see it'll keep your shawl in place. You can move, you can hop around, and your shawl won't fall down. I think these are brilliant. Whoever came up with these is brilliant. I love these. And my next handful of orders are going to get, these ones are wooden. They are mass produced. I'm trying to find a local guy that'll make them for me. But my next couple orders are going to get a shawl pin. Just as a little bonus, little added thank you. And like I said, trying to find a local woodworker. So I can give, you know, another artist some exposure. While I try to get exposure for myself. So that's what I'm doing this week. Um, this week's not crazy. It's not jam-packed. I don't have a lot of things planned just for the simple fact of I feel awful. So this is going to be short and sweet. But, yeah, that's what I'm doing. i um, trying to push some sales. Trying to get some different stuff made. I think I'm going to start working on some garments. I have a lot of garment cotton. And I'm not really... I have made myself a shirt. And I have made a toddler dress. But I don't have a toddler for reference, so I had to use stuffed animals that were approximately toddler size. So I haven't heard how that came out yet. That, that's been mailed and received. I just don't know if it fits on the toddler properly. I'm waiting for feedback. But yeah. I'm not going to hold you here and ramble on. Um, there's probably something I'm forgetting. But, you know, oh, next one. Next one I'm going to be doing Burnett Big Blanket because I just got my hooks in. Oh, just got my hooks in for the Burnett Big. Let me tell you, biggest hook I owned before I bought this set was an 8. Which, I don't even know what it is letter-wise. H. Maybe an H. I'm only a year into my crochet journey, so, you know. Oh, USL11. An 8 is a USL11. So that was my biggest hook before I bought this set. Now my biggest hook is a 25. Burnett Blanket Big calls for a 25. I'm not sure if I can use this. 
I'm not sure if this will be more comfortable or less comfortable than using thinner needles. I have never used a knitting needle that I can hold like a weapon. But I will. Because I have two skeins of brunette blanket big and I have two skeins coming in that coordinate with it because I can't find any more of the red splash because it's out of stock. It's out of stock online. Several stores in my area do not carry it and it is a Michaels exclusive for the red splash color. So I have had to contact stores out of my area. I have had to contact stores in other states and see if they'll mail it to me, which they won't. So I'm still trying to get my hands on more of the brunette blanket big in the red splash. But I have two skeins and I have never used a chunky yarn. So I mean, I have used a chunky yarn. I have never used a jumbo yarn. I have never used yarn as big as brunette blanket and I'm not a big fan of chenille but I am a big fan of the color red splash especially for spooky season so that's going to be my next vid I feel like I'm threatening you to keep shaking this <laughs> alrighty so I am going to rehydrate take some meds get my nicotine in Today's nicotine of the day is Vape Crafts. OMG. So good. It will not let me focus. Maybe if I cover my face. There we go. And don't follow these warnings. Nicotine is not an addictive chemical. But that goes into politics and government and big pharma and shills and the government would never lie to us. So we're not going there. But that's our nicotine of the day. OMG So Good is very much a brown sugar cookie to my taste. I want six milligrams of nicotine, your mileage may vary. My tongue is not in your face, so you may taste something different than I do, but it's rather no me. So I got my nicotine, I got my coffee, I got my podcast in. I guess this is a podcast. I don't know what else to call this. But brain fog, so maybe that's not the right word. Meh. Okay. Thank you for joining me again. I appreciate you being here so much. I appreciate you watching my silly ramblings. Hopefully I have helped somebody out because, you know, I started to crochet. My mother-in-law taught me the basics and she said, I will teach you to crochet if you make me some pot holders. I said, okay. And I made her some pot holders and I started making a blanket. Then it got to be too much and, and my life got a little too crazy and the blanket ended up in a bag in my closet and then moving to another house and then moving to another house and it's been in like four closets so the last time it fell on my head I decided to finish it so finish that blanket uh, just kind of finishing that blanket kind of got me started on I'm stuck in the house I have a whole lot of time and I don't just want to sit here and watch TV or the internet or whatever so I picked up some supplies and I started crocheting again so I'm reteaching myself and I'm learning all kinds of stuff and I want to give a very large thank you to Crystal from Bag a Day and Cinnamon from Cinnamon Stitches if you don't follow both of those I would suggest go learn they're good people. They seem to be good community people. 
and I have learned a lot from them picking this back up and trying to remember it's a lot like riding a bike except when you fall off you don't get hurt you never really forget how to crochet and if you make a mistake it's not a big deal your stuff doesn't have to be perfect homemade things don't have to be perfect um it's why they're one of a kind you don't have to crochet just like someone else i just found out there's two different holds for a crochet hook i have to go look that up because i didn't know there was another way to hold apparently i'm enough i am a knife hold crocheter but your stuff doesn't have to be perfect it doesn't have to be i have gone bonkers finding mistakes three rows later and frogging it back and doing it again and it's just not worth all the stress you don't have to make that pattern perfect you don't have to make that pattern exact my phone's ringing you don't have to be the world's best crocheter just crochet just enjoy what you're doing I make a mistake. I call myself can of crochet because most of the time I am medicated and I am going to make mistakes and that's okay because stuff happens. Stuff happens. And you can decide to frog it back and fix it. Or if it's a thing like my major problem is when I have to put the project down, I have to go do something, and then I come back to it. A lot of times I forget that third double crochet in the granny squares. Don't stress. It's not that big of a deal. You should not stress about something that you enjoy doing. This is supposed to be relaxing. So do what you feel. You do you. Just let the crochet happen. I know that's that's kind of a hot take and it shouldn't be but I don't sell myself as perfect things I don't sell them as perfect creations I sell them as functional art anything fits under the category of functional art and crochet you are making art you wiggle that little stick around and you mumble some words to yourself and all of a sudden yarn becomes a fabric. That's magic. And if you focus on things and you can put your intent into that, that's even better. When I crochet, I have a mantra of safe, warm, and well. And as I'm doing, my brain's just going safe, warm, and well, safe. It's kind of meditation. Safe, warm, and well, safe. And you put that intention, I put that intention in everything I make. And it might not do anything. But it might. Crafting is magic. Intentions are magic. So why not put a little extra into those things you're sending out in the world? Your positivity can transmit through things you touch. So, weird things. I'm getting a little woo-woo on you. I'm a lot woo-woo and a lot weird. So that's going to come out more. Just a warning. Um, I am going to finish my coffee and see if I can get this big brown granny square thing done and then I'm gonna to have to find something else to work on because I have to be making something all the time I have to keep my hands busy keeping my hands busy keeps my brain busy and that doesn't leave me time for wallow a lot of times when you're stuck in the house you can get stuck in your head and it's not always a good place so 
positive intentions. Send more good out into the world. The world needs more good. The world needs more good people. The world needs more good. So I put positive intentions in everything I make. Positive intentions mean a lot. All right. Thank you for joining me, lovelies. I appreciate it. I am so grateful to be here. I am grateful that people are watching my content. I'm surprised that people are watching my content, but I'm grateful for you to be here. So thank you from my heart. Thank you very much. It really does mean a lot. And I will be back in the next couple days when I'm done these granny squares and once my other Bernat yarn comes in. Goodbye, lovelies. Have a good day. Have a good week. Until next time.